So a very good afternoon to everybody and once again a very warm welcome to our Business Spotlight interview series. My name is Ron Maycock, I'm the owner of Action Coach Castleford and of Business Performance UK and I'm delighted this afternoon to be joined by Jem Bevan. Uh, Jem, very good afternoon to you. Hey, good afternoon and thank you for having me on. Uh, no pleasure. problem at all. It's our, 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 our pleasure to share your journey. So, um, Gem is the owner of Social Gems, uh, very appropriately named, and we'll be finding lots more about Social Gems uh, from Gem in a few moments' time. Before we do that, though, I just really wanted to share the purpose of these interviews. Uh, we're surrounded by some amazing businesses in our region. They're each on their own journeys, and these interviews help us showcase their achievements, put them in the spotlight and basically increase awareness that they, one, exist and two, are doing some fantastic work for other clients, for other people, and uh, and, and maybe you can benefit from that as well. So um, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Jem. Um, Jem, do you want to tell me a little bit more about Social Gems? Yes, yeah, so Social Gems is a social media marketing agency. We predominantly work on LinkedIn, purely based on that's where our marketing is the strongest right now and where we put most of our efforts. Um, but we do work across all different social media platforms. So if you're looking to stand out on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, or even X, if anyone's still on X. Um, <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. And and. And typically, who's your target audience? Is this business to business, business to consumer? Where do you sort of sit in that? So we do a mixture of both. Um, predominantly, I'm known within the recruitment space because that's where my um, career started. I used to uh, payroll solutions to recruitment agencies. So quite a lot of the people that we work with are service-based. But we do work with some companies that are product based as well. We kind of like the variety. We never really niche down into one specific sector just because I couldn't think of anything worse than trying to make 15 people in the same sector stand out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, you can fall into that uh, too much of a good thing kind of thing where you send them the same message if they're not truly different um then it can become a little bit uh a little bit samey i guess so and 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 in terms of how you got to where you are what's been your journey and um, so i actually started selling phones in car phone warehouse um while i was at university uh found out after finishing uni i was about 22 23 that i was pregnant with my little boy so working in that type of environment where it was retail, you were working weekends, your hours were quite sporadic. You never really knew from one week to another what days you were actually going to be in. I needed a little bit more stability. So I figured I was good at sales and every other job I'd had before, it was kind of a gem shut up. Um, but in sales, it's kind of celebrated if you're a bit chatty. Um, so I thought, right, I need to stay in that type of sector. Um, and applied for a few roles in B2B sales. Went to work in a design and print agency over in South Kirby. And yeah, um, found out about LinkedIn and everything from there. Uh, I was given a phone and a laptop and told to crack on with no training. Had absolutely no idea how to get people to buy into me without being able to showcase my personality. Um, and that's where LinkedIn came along. So, I mean, you... you relatively i'll not say an early adopter of linkedin but th this was a fundamental of how you increase people's connectivity with their networks um what have you learned from that what what are the not not necessarily giving away the trade secrets but what are the common areas that you're helping people on i guess based on the mistakes that they're currently making so there's there's lots of different areas. So believe it or not, I am kind of classed as one of the other developers of LinkedIn. When I started utilizing it, we're talking about 11 years ago now. So actually back then, you could just send that blind sales pitch mm -hmm. that was 15 pages long, waffling war and peace about everything that you offer. And it was seen as out of the box thinking. But obviously over the years, the more people have adopted and developed the platform, the more the platform's developed itself. So with quite a lot of people, what we tend to find is they become LinkedIn workers. So I don't mean that in a derogatory way, but it's kind of they want to get involved in everything that's going on. They see all the content, but fear holds, holds them back, whether or not that's fear of 
what people might think, what people might say, whether or not they're going to offend someone, that tends to be one of the main reasons people hold back. That and fear that they're just not interested enough. Um, but what we tend to teach them is, and I think my post on this, uh, I did a post on this actually um, earlier on in the week about we're all boring. A lot of people think you need to live this um, massively, fantastically lavish lifestyle in order to generate any form of attraction on LinkedIn or any other social media platform, but that's not true. The more relatable stuff, talking about the things that we all go through every day, walking the dogs, paying the mortgage, something happening that's um, unexpected, that changes the course of our day. All that's relatable because it's things that we're all going through all the time. And I think it's actually breaking down those barriers. And a lot of people do this in terms of sales, where you'll put someone on a pedestal. People are kind of putting LinkedIn on that pedestal as well and thinking they need to be better than they are. They don't. And sometimes people just need that little bit of a helping hand to help them take that first step. Yeah, it's interesting. The, the I mean, the, I, I remember speaking to someone in in terms of some marketing work that we were doing from a coaching perspective and 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 i put them in in contact if you can with a a particular book which was a bit of a bible of how linkedin works and what it's there to do and how to get it to work for you and we reviewed that they did that they got some great results and then uh two years later i turned around and said you know someone else have you read this book and I went, it's a good starting point, but unfortunately the algorithms have changed. So what was true five years ago and was the way to use LinkedIn um, suddenly has gone off the table. So people people spent a lot of time learning how it was working and now they're doing stuff that's actually counterproductive. Um, you know, they're just, they're consistently posting noise out there and it's not actually generating any business. So having experts who understand how that transition has worked is a vital thing. So in terms of the business model then within social gems, then are you seeing yourself as an outsourced provider of, or are you training people to do this or a combination of? So we, we do it all and we're actually adding more and more services this year just to make sure that we can help everyone. So I am a massive people pleaser. Um, I always have been. It's a good thing and a bad thing sometimes. But what tends to happen is if people are in the infancy stages of actually just setting up the businesses by actually outsourcing to us it's, or actually getting us in to do coaching on a, on a three month basis, mm -hmm. it's not something they can afford straight away. So we are actually adding new things so we can completely take over the account and manage absolutely everything for you. We can train you or coach you over a three month period to support you through that um, through that period, essentially, because it's mm -hmm. not a one and done thing until LinkedIn becomes a habit. It's hard to keep on track, but there's also other people that just need an hour of your time to ask a couple of questions just to get a couple of things straight in the head. Like in your situation, Ron, you've read the book, you've understood it, you've trialled and done things yourself, but sometimes it's just nice to have someone to speak to about the things that you're doing to make sure you're on the right track. We've then started offering things like that. We now offer social reviews. Um, yeah, so effectively we can do anything to fit any budget. Okay, excellent. And, and as much as you have a wide reach in terms of the offering, What's the ideal client for you? Is there a particular amount of spend? Is there a particular amount of activity? Um, or is it based on uh, you know, sim simply just doing things better than they can? Is there, is, is there that target where you're really, really focused and go, that's a sweet spot. That's where we're at our best. So it, it's when people are invested, which sounds daft. So yes, you can outsource everything to us and we can deal with every element, but the more involved you are, the more you're gonna get from it. Mm -hmm. So we can help with things like the engagement, the liking and commenting on industry specific people's posts, but effectively you need to be there to help build that network. Mm -hmm. So it, effectively for us, it's anyone that just wants to actually get something out of it and is willing to put the work in. Yeah, yeah. excellent, fantastic. and and. Geographically, are you are, are you 
focusing on your doorstep first and foremost or are you literally offering your services to anyone that can find you via social media or linkedin so we're, we're everywhere so we've got clients in america we've got clients in switzerland um we've got one in new york uh a lot in the uk we do work with some companies in and around yorkshire but predominantly it's birmingham london based mm -hmm. and that's just because of our reach and what i did before when I worked in business uh, business development in payroll solutions, it was literally. I'm, the only reason I'm doing that, I'm really, really sorry. My dogs just started dreaming in the background. Can you hear it? <laughs> Dream, dreaming of social media posts. Uh, so... <laughs> so I was like, oh God, this is. So I tried to stop. So there was a point where we could pause it. <laughs> and I think, oh, I'm really sorry. Well, I wouldn't worry. Uh, it's it's real life. It actually it, it leads into uh, the the sort of next question, I guess, because of quite almost a nice uh, seamless segue into it. In terms of, have you noticed any changes other than the increase in volume that was forced on us through lockdown and things like that? Because it it changed everything for for everyone, but it all of a sudden meant that loads of people felt they were obliged to have more of a digital footprint. So how's that affected you? So we were in, so believe it or not, at the beginning of lockdown, we got about 20 clients at the time. We lost 10, 12 overnight. Mm -hmm. um, but I got a little boy to now a homeschool. So I was like, well, it's probably for the best right now. Um, but two, three weeks later, everyone started coming back. Everyone realized that the online presence was the only way to really get in contact with people because cold calling is only effective when people are in the office to answer the phone. Mm -hmm. um, so we actually did see quite a lot more people coming online. There's good points about that as well. What you also found is because a lot of people didn't have an outlet anymore, they then started being a little bit more open, more real and raw on social media than they had been previously. So if you go back like five, six years ago, there was me and a few other people and there was very, very few others that actually talks about life in general rather than this bravado of we've got this most amazing life. We actually talked about what it's like to be a business owner and things like that. And you actually saw more and more people doing that, more, more people actually stepping out of their comfort zones and talking about how they're actually feeling in lockdown, mm -hmm. how staying at home and working from home now was affecting their mental health because they used to be out and about and seeing different people on a day-to-day -day basis and it was hard. So I actually think it changed the platform for the better. I've always been one of these people that never believed in the whole, you have to be a corporate way to build relationships with people. I've always been quite friendly um, and probably a little bit of an over overshare, to be fair. But I always found that being me always helps me generate sales. But then it always got me in trouble with my directors or the company owners because I've put, hey, Chip, or speak soon, babe, on an email. But someone had responded in the same way to me. Um, and you saw more of those corporate barriers being dropped and people actually being more themselves. And I think we're seeing more and more of that now. We've seen a shift in the last year, year and a half in terms of people talking about um, suffering from, and not suffering from, sorry, but having things like ADHD, um, autism, being on some form of spectrum where it wouldn't, wouldn't have been spoken about before. That's then now leading to other people actually getting the diagnoses and helping understand themselves. So things like that and the changes that we're seeing that are helping people on a personal level, as well as on a business level, I'm loving yeah, it, it, it's it's interesting, and, and and I don't know if you're you're finding this in the market as well. Um, there's been a recent influx of communication that I've received where I take one look at it and go, it's far too generic, it's far too AI generated. It has been generated by a, a chat GPT or whatever, uh, and it goes straight in the bit. Because it's not that it, it's lacking the human context. It's got the content, don't get me wrong, but I can see through the majority of it. And joking, you know, jokingly, I was saying the other day, out of seven emails that I suddenly received in one day, all which looked the same, the only one that I actually truly think was sent by a person spelt my name wrong. Yeah, and, and it's like, well, 
there you go you know so chances are you know the computer would have been a little bit smarter to that but just the wording it it doesn't engage with you so so that, it, with that side sorry in terms of the ai we are seeing a lot of a shift in terms of that across all different social media platforms mm -hmm. in terms of posts as well and I think if anyone's actually listening to this, one of the things I want them to take away from this is AI is a fantastic tool when used right. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, if you're using it to create marketing um, marketing material, great stuff, but amend and tailor it and change it. Regardless of what you put into that and what it spits out, it's always going to have to be changed because the human element is always going to be lacking. Yeah, And it always needs putting back in. Yeah, if you can if you can engage it with your own stories or even the royal we stories where it's actually happened and you can put the contextual aspect in, then yeah, it's it's one of the best tools that I've ever seen in terms of saving myself a load of time for a lot of a lot of content or content and copy, but then it's equally for every bit that it generates, I've got to go through it and humanize that. And as long as I can humanize it, then it's it's a fantastic add-on because it does save us time. So so in in terms of we, we we said about other social medias and 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 other platforms, and as you said, but specifically within LinkedIn, then you've got a lot of experience in that. And and that's more relating, I guess, to that business kind of community and the the, the business to business side of things. So before the interview, we were talking about certain higher end premium products within that. So things like sales navigator, you mentioned the recruitment industry as well, though. So are you, do you work with things like the recruiter model of LinkedIn, which is bells and whistles, but it's similar to, to sales navigator as a premium offering of engaging a, in a wider network? Yeah. So I have actually played with recruiter on a number of occasions and I still stand by the fact that I think sales now is better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it, it's it, it, it's strange. I, I, a long time ago, I had a recruitment business and, and, and that business, we had a CRM system, which was not the spots off anything, not the spots off actually most CRM systems 15 years later. Mm. But what it definitely outperformed was the ones that were designed for recruiters. This wasn't. It was a, 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 a pre seed a precursor to a social network, basically, that we were using in a business context. And it was phenomenal. And they got rid of it and they just went, well, we'll call it that or we'll tailor make your website specifically for this. And, and you're just going, I've lost half my functionality. You know, mm -hmm. it's not what you really need. So I think that kind of me about it is like on recruiter they don't have things like on sales nav you've got a button that will tell you who's posted on linkedin in the last 30 days mm -hmm. it'll tell you who's changed roles in the last 90 days yeah you can see who's recently had funding for the company now in terms of the funding side from my point of view that's great when people tend to get funding they want to spend it on marketing so it's a great time for me to get in contact as a recruiter as a prime example Someone in a higher up position as, as a decision maker changing roles in the last 30 days, it's a great time for you to get in contact mm -hmm. because that's when they're going to want to put their stamp on things and make changes because then those changes are going to be what they did. Mm -hmm. So it's a good time for you to start building a relationship with people. And I don't get why that like little things like that are actually in the recruiter license because they're in the sales one. And I think they've misunderstood how recruiters work. And I think they don't, they're lacking the understanding of that. Most people are actually doing a little bit of 360. Mm -hmm. They'll be looking for end clients and looking for people to fill the roles too. So you need functionalities of both what's in recruiter and sales and for it to work effectively together. So it's interesting because you, you seem to be coming at social media marketing, not from social media, that this is a marketing tool and one of many. And if you understand how marketing works, then these are just vehicles to to get you in front of your audience. Is that a, a, a fair sort of assessment of, of how you see what you do? Yeah, I, I'd say it's more of understanding of people and people's perceptions. Um, so like if we use outreach as an example, if you send a connection request that's completely blind to someone, 
the chances of them accepting it are very minimal. But if you put a few touch points in place first and you like someone's post, comment on that post, send a connection request mentioning that post, all of a sudden you've changed that person's perception. Mm -hmm. So the reason that they're actually going to um, not accept that first message, that first connection request that you send sending with nothing on it is they're going to automatically assume that you're trying to sell them something. Mm -hmm. But when you do all these little steps first and then send that connection request, people are like, oh, they love what they're seeing. They want to see more of it. Mm -hmm. So they're more likely to respond. So I think it's more of a, from the, the sales background and business development, it's actually understanding people and how, what makes them tick more than anything else? It's interesting to say, and, and you know, there's there's lots of other people doing social media, but they're hitting it, going, we understand how social media works, and you got more traditional marketeers going, we understand how marketing is, but we don't really get that social media bit. Um, you seem to have found a happy happy space, if you like, your lane in terms of where you can add value to other businesses seems to be quite well defined that it's bringing the two it's the the techniques of just connecting with people and then making sure that it's got appealing content to make sure that you're engaging with the right target not just anyone and everyone so brilliant it's it, it, it's a good differentiator so so you've been going for around about what four or five years um i think we were saying that it was just before lockdown and everything like that that the business actually formed in its current iteration um so what's next what's the what's the plans over the next few years where do you see this sort of going so we're in a growth period at the moment um, so we're offering new things because, like I mentioned at the beginning of this, I just don't like not being able to help people. And I think everyone deserves help and increasing our marketing. So for the last two years, I've got really lax with my own marketing because I spent all my time focusing on clients. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to change a little bit this year and um, because I used to be known for understanding LinkedIn more than anything. Um, and I feel like that's slightly diluted over the last two years and it's my own fault so yeah picking that up and mm -hmm. that in itself will help us generate more business than we have enough we in the last year we've done more than we did the year before and we just wanted to continue that growth yeah, but yeah. in a sustainable way that doesn't kill me in the process yeah yeah no absolutely and it, and it is the it's the definition of the oxymoron isn't it of of you know you're a marketing business that that has overlooked some of its own marketing you know by your own admission it's the you know, it's the insolvency it's practitioner life. going out of business, you know, or whatever it is. So it's it's, it's that sort of that that sort of uh, stigma, and it and it's interesting from a from a user of third party and outsource services and things like that. The first thing that I I tend to look at as a business is whatever I'm looking for them to do. I look at how they do it for themselves. That's my first port of call to assess: Are you any good? Before oh, yeah, I'll absolutely. even, you know, before you even go it. So it's, it's, it, as you say, we can get a little bit deflected and and not diluted so much, but uh, we can lose sight of making sure that we're actually our number one client as well. So as it's well as having all the other awesome. people. Like, oh, that can wait till tomorrow because I've got to do the client stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you got to put yourself first. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, yeah, it's been a few months since the post. Oh, how did that happen? <laughs> excellent so so in in terms of um advice that you would give to people then um to to businesses to prospect clients to other people whether they're in social media or in marketing generally or just starting up their own business based on your journey based on your experience is there any advice and and i suppose from self-reflection is there anything that you do drastically different as well so there's been like times where I've second guessed myself and felt like we needed to either merge with another company or find some other way of growing without just doing it organically. So I think believing in yourself is a key thing if you're actually setting up on your own mm -hmm. and having like-minded individuals around you that can help build you up in those moments of self-doubt is massively important too. Finding people that actually understand what you're going through and are going on the same journey themselves. And LinkedIn's a fantastic tool for that. Mm -hmm. so I always say your vibe attracts your tribe mm -hmm. now a lot of people will think that when they're first starting a business 
oh my God, I've got to spend loads of money on marketing. I've got to get myself everywhere. I need to be in everybody's news feeds. I need to post, 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 post. When in reality, what they're doing is they're screaming in an empty room. You're posting all this content, but effectively you've not told anyone where to go to get this content. You've not spent any time liking or commenting or engaging with any other people in your news feed. And that's actually the key bit. So instead of putting so much pressure on yourself to post at the beginning and get yourself noticed that way, and then getting no likes on that post, getting disheartened and thinking everybody hates you and that you're boring, and then stopping doing it all together, actually start with that engagement piece. So dedicate 15 minutes each day, block it out in your diary so you can't forget to get involved with other people's conversations. And off the back of that, send connection requests and messages to those people to build your network. Because the network, even if you can't actively sell to that person, if they work in a similar field to the areas you want to work, their connections are going to be relevant as well. Mm -hmm. So just spend time networking and don't do everything online and expect to get all the results by just doing having an online presence. You need yeah. to be going out to networking events and doing stuff in person too. It all works in conjunction. You tend to find that if you've got a strong online presence, and then you attend a networking event in person. People are actually more inclined to talk to you and they'll start talking to you about something that you've posted previously. Mm -hmm. So work them both together and make your business as successful as possible. Uh, so yeah, I think the key thing from there, if anyone's watching this and, and thinking, OK, how, how do I disseminate that? 15 minutes a day. It's a simple discipline that if you repeat and do well, will lead to success. It very similar to a, a, if you come across Jim Rohn or anything like that, but Jim Rohn says that success is a few simple disciplines practice well every day. Well, it's like That's when everyone's it. doing a New Year's resolution. Actually, it's better to just go, do you know what? I want to achieve this and how am I going to achieve it? Mm -hmm. I need all these little steps in between and celebrate every single little step on the path because otherwise you're just going to be disheartened that you're not there right now. Yeah, yeah. But actually, you've achieved a lot. Yeah. It's, it's, it's building the process rather than chasing the results. The results will look after themselves. So it's great advice for people, you know, whatever your business, if you're early stages, if you're starting out, if you're hitting reset at the moment, I guess, if you, you know, you've tried it one way, you've not got to quite where you wanted to be and you're keeping going and you, you're digging into that resilience, try it a different way, but just a few simple disciplines. 15 minutes is probably enough. But by the sound of it, also surround yourself with people who are willing to share and educate. And as Jen was sort of saying, you know, whatever it might be, whether it's total outsourcing or you just need a little bit of a prompt or a nudge or a little bit of coaching or advice, then there are people that can support you on your journey. So great advice. So it's bringing us towards the end of the interview. Um, I suppose the sanity check from, from my own side of side of things is, to put it back to yourself, Gem, and just find out, is there anything we've not covered or anything that you'd like to add? Um, other than another little top tip in terms of LinkedIn. So a lot of people will think that in terms of getting noticed, you have to do a lot of commenting and it's got to be really in-depth comments that you put in on everything to showcase how knowledgeable you are. Yes, it's really, really good to put comments like that on stuff. But in the beginning, if you're not comfortable doing that, by actually focusing on company pages and individuals with low amounts of engagement, by just putting a like on there in over the first couple of days until you increase your confidence levels, that in itself will start to get you noticed too. So don't think that you've got to go hell for leather and every single comment that you put on everything's got to be the most fantastic thing you've ever said ever, because even just a like can make all the difference sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so I think it boils down to that consistency, doesn't it? It's it's consistency of activity rather than what the actual activity needs to be. It doesn't have to be well, perfect. It just has to interact. One day, you can give 30% the, the next day, but that 30% for that day mm -hmm. is 100%. Yeah. So if some days you only feel like liking because your head's not in it, at least you're doing something. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and you heard it here first, you're either all in or you're not. It's as simple as that. There's no halfway ground. Go all in for a burst and then do that and repeat that. So brilliant advice and, and, and a fantastic share from that. 
So um, that does bring us towards uh, to to the end of the actual interview. So um, just uh, remains to be said to anyone who's watching this, if you're thinking I'd like to promote my own business just in the same way that Jem has, then when we post these videos, there'll be uh, details of how to get in touch, how to book in uh, to record your own spotlight interview. Uh, big thank you for Jem uh, for sharing your journey. It's been really insightful and uh, wish you all the success uh, in the future as it continues to grow so thank you for sharing um, you. and uh, thank you for everyone else who's been watching it's been another of our business spotlight interviews and we'll see you soon keep smiling do get in touch thanks bye cheers bye